You're watching, old mate. Backyard Tech. I am in no way, shape, or form a fully qualified mechanic. Therefore, if you are following along with this service repair and or information video, you are doing this at your own risk. So you have been warned. All right. Well, for the fans of 80 series videos here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech, you're in for a treat because here comes the second video. Now, I've mentioned this in the past. My car fridge doesn't really like being powered from inside the cab of the 80 series regardless of whether it's coming off the cigarette lighter or my multi-out. Now, as we know, the multi-out is hardwired straight into the power outlet under the bonnet of the 80 series. Well, while, while I was in Bendigo for the Christmas break, I decided it might be a good idea to add a new circuit to the 80 series, specifically just for the car fridge. One of the best four-wheel drives ever made. Here at Backyard Tech, it's 80 series time. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. It is 80 series time again here at Backyard Tech for weekend Saturdays. And uh, as I said, for the fans of 80 series videos here at Backyard Tech, you guys are in for a treat. All right, now as I've mentioned in the past, I have had some problems with the car fridge. Uh, either being powered directly from the cigarette lighter or my multi out, uh, which as we know is hardwired into that power outlet under the bonnet. So while I was in Bendigo, and I, I hadn't actually mentioned it to you guys, but for some time I'd been trying to figure out if a plan I'd had up here, which as we know can be dangerous, would actually work. Well, it turns out it does. So what I ended up doing was getting some um, two core flex, capable of around 15 amps and essentially made an entire new circuit just for the fridge and it works like a dream trust me so again grab a cup of coffee sit down and enjoy another 80 series video as we set up a new circuit for my car fridge in the 80 series alrighty how are we all it is Monday the 28th of December 2020 now by the time you guys have seen this you've already watched the introduction uh, to this video um, as I said in the introdu introduction we had a bit of a problem with my car fridge and I've decided to wire it into here all right into my power outlet I the cable going down the side of the vehicle uh, I didn't bother doing a video on laying cable because let's face it, we can all lay loom in a vehicle. My initial plan, as I said in the intro, was to use this. The other half's father convinced me to go and get one of those. Some spade terminals which we've crimped onto the end of the leads. And then I'm just going to put the spades on the back of here. I've given myself plenty of lead. This is actually um, multi-purpose lead. Uh, this is multi-purpose power lead, so it can be used for auto and it can be used for uh, AC um, uh, 240 volt low current so you know something like two and a half three amps or DC Around 24 volts at about 15 amps now my fridge as you know is around 10 so we're all good there um, I've had to use red and blue because he didn't have any black spades obviously red is um positive and as i said i've got it running here i've obviously got to tuck it all through there got it running here got it running up there through the uh through the hole in the firewall for all the other cables comes out there wraps underneath the brake wraps underneath the air and then comes up here along with the two-way and the uh, and the um, power adapter for my GPS. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it all back together, then bring the fridge out. Actually, no, I'm not going to bring the fridge out yet. I'll do that later, but I'll show you how this all ends up looking. Um, I did try and solder the cables to. The two terminals it didn't work so well, so I'm just going to spade it on, and and uh, we'll be done. So let me put uh, 
let me put all this back together I'll show you what it looks like so that's what it'll look, look like now the know-it-all experts you guys are not going to want to watch this you know how to do this you've done it many times before so it's probably boring to you guys I think it was uh, the VX Sahara I think that used to have a cigarette lighter and an Anderson plug around that area as well so because obviously I've got the ashtray there as well so now that that's in what I'm going to do is remembering that you have accessories ignition and bat now this is before the start mechanism so you don't get the power drop all right this is basically straight across the battery these two are not all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it straight across the battery, which will be fine, and um, put it all back together, um, and then I'll we'll check it uh, at a later date. The other thing coming up too, uh, we've got a, I've got a we've got a bit of a job on the uh, other half's father's Hilux coming up for you as well. But anyway, let me get all this put back together, and uh, it should be it should look good. All right, so common ground as you can see ignition for the uh, power diverter and the battery uh, the two-way and the rear power on permanently all right now the thing is what you've got to remember with the fridge is that it's not always on okay I'm not going to always have it plugged in so that'll uh, that'll do quite nicely all right, so now what I've got to do is put everything back together. I've got most of the cabling mapped up through there and then tucked in between the carpet and the firewall and then in through the, out through the hole. Uh, it's going through there, runs through there. I've just got to put, obviously, all that back on and uh, we'll be done. All right, power outlet covers back on. Uh, door skirts are back on side skirts back on all through there and liners back on I've just got to put all my fluids back put the ashtray back and essentially job done and uh, I've got to put that back on because I had to pull that off as well so there we go so I've now got a full power outlet there which means also the fridge isn't going to have a complete SH1T fit because the problem I've been having with the fridge um, is that this damn thing down here is limited to current so when the fridge goes to start up it can't get, it can get the voltage but it can't get the current so it sits there and has an SH1T fit throws up a power error so there we go anyway there we are. also don't forget guys coming up we've got a uh, not a big job depending on how you look at it but uh, that device right there in the middle of your screen known as my heater tap well the new one's rocked up um, as I said I got it delivered up here to the other house parents house and uh, either today or tomorrow I will be uh, replacing that tap um, luckily I don't have to replace the hope well that's not true I don't have to completely replace the hoses. What I've actually got to do is cut the end off. Uh, where are we? Engine side. So that side. Cut the end off and then I've bought some new um, worm clamps to, uh, to put onto there. Because you can see there with the, U, with the U pipe, they're pin clamps. Right? They're not the worm clamps or see you next Tuesday clamps. They're split pin, split pin clamps which is uh, whoop, a little bit uh, different. So there we are. Anyway, a bit of an auto elect job on that one. Um, as I mentioned in the, uh, the first video back, I didn't bother doing a video on the other half's father's new two-way, which he got for Christmas, because you guys have seen me install both my two-way. There's a video from dating way back from me doing his old GME two-way, so... Uh, you know what what's the point so 
There we go. Anyway, guys, that's it for the 80. Until we get the water tap done, that's the Audio all that stuff done. We'll catch you later. Have a good one.